All right. Back at another Pinche podcast right here. I'm Lobo, and I'd like to uh, introduce the model we have here today, Samantha. Samantha, can you, you know, introduce yourself? Uh, give us your your Instagram handle, your how long have you been modeling? Yeah. Um, so my name is Miss Samantha Hope. Um, I've been modeling for probably about eight years now um, in the lowrider scene. I think this last super show should have been my sixth if COVID didn't mess mm. us up. Um, I got brought in um, by a photographer out of Phoenix. Um, I mm. was just doing some things down here before a couple brand shoots. Mm. Um, some stuff for some local like clothing lines and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I I was dancing since I was young, like two years old. So I kind of just moved from dance into modeling um, right after high school or so. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, my Instagram handle is the same that's on here, Miss Samantha yeah. Hope. <laughs> right, I, got it, I got it right this time. Good. I I know I had another interview and I pressed the wrong button. I didn't realize I had the wrong person's name underneath. Whoops. Yeah, I'll fix that. Though. I'll fix it in editing. Um, so, um, you know, around how many shows uh, do you attend? Do you do do you attend a lot of shows out there? Yeah. Mm. Um, Arizona Super Show probably has been my biggest one I've been to. Like I said, I've I did five super shows so far. Mm. It would have been six had COVID not messed the whole world up. Mm. Um, I've been to Dino's Get Down. I've been to the Guadalupe Show. Um, I've been to Day at the Bay. That's out in San Diego. That yeah. is an amazing show. They're gonna. Um, he's bringing that, it back. Did they are? Yeah, it's the oh, July thirteenth. So July thirteenth is a Saturday. I'll, I'm yeah, going yeah. out there. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely gonna go out there if they're bringing it back. Heck yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I do like I really, really work a lot with New Class Car Club down here and Streetwise mm. Car Club. They mm. are super supportive of me, um, and I attend their shows all the time. This last year, I actually at Streetwise for four years now. I've set up my own booth for my shop at nice. their car show, and I've cut hair there. For, I think this was four years this past show in February. Um, and then New Class Car Club, I've gone to their show maybe about five years now. And then this last year I showed my truck at that show as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. So since you've been modeling, mm -hmm. can you tell me about like an experience you had that stood out a positive experience, like something like either it was a really good show or just something that happened at a show, something that really like is very memorable for you. It's a, a good, a good experience. Um, honestly, my first, my first super show was probably the coolest moment ever. Um, I was actually, so you know how Arizona super show used to be on Saturday and then Frank's hydraulics had their hop on Sunday. Yeah. So the first year I went out there, I hooked up with AZ Vita. Um, show you for watching. Thank you. I love you. Um, click Phoenix is just the coolest group of people. And yeah. um, so I was modeling on one of their cars for AZ Vita. And this little girl, she had some sort of, um, I don't know if it was like a disorder or something like that, mm -hmm. um, but she wasn't a quote unquote, what they would call a normal kid. And mm -hmm. uh, her dad came up to me and was like, my little girl's too nervous to, to ask, but can you please take a picture with her? And I was just nice. in the car in there. Um, I can't remember who the owner of it is, but it's the bright orange uh, G body from Phoenix. Okay. And this little girl was just so sweet and she had this big, huge smile. And then maybe an hour after that, there was another little girl that came up to me. She was like, you're so pretty. Can I take a picture with you? And like, that's, that's what I do this for, man, is that next generation. As fun as it is for me and as much like, you know, um, recognition as i might get i do this mm. for the kids and it's it's like to pass it on to the next generation and get yeah. them involved because if the kids aren't involved this goes away yeah and oh. and, and you can look at it like it's not not exactly going to be uh for the next model but it could be the next photographer next, right. the next you know the next painter the next uh you know designer anything like yes. that you know and um so with that being said what is one thing that sticks out about uh during your modeling at a car shows that was a negative thing um 
<laughs> I was thinking about this all day. Mm. And, uh, you know, I've noticed because I have been doing this for a little while now. Um, <clears throat> what I dislike is when I go to a show and like for me, I do my more risque type of outfits, guys. I do my more risque type of outfits on rolling day only. Like I don't mm -hmm. really enjoy going to the big show part. Yeah. Um, I don't <laughs> like going to they the big show part and having, yeah, my dogs are right here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't like going to the big show and having like a bunch of people staring at me half clothed. You know what yeah. I mean? And even like this last year, I didn't do any of that at all. There was no risque anything at all. Um, mm. And I almost liked it more because I wasn't getting any of the comments I'm about to talk about. You know, like two or three years ago, I wore what would be considered like a bathing suit, I guess. Yeah. And, um, you know, but the bathing suits have become very uh, skimpy, I guess, in recent years. And, uh, yeah, they're questionable with their bathing suits nowadays. Pretty, yeah. pretty see through. Right, you might as well be wearing lingerie a lot of the mm. time, you know. Um, and as much as as much fun as that is, because I shoot boudoir too, so oh. I know that things can be sexy, but there's a way to make it classy and make it, um, you know, approachable and things like that. Yeah. When I, in the past, when I have worn more skimpier clothes, I get people mostly older men that like to get a little touchy feely yeah or make comments that i don't exactly uh, appreciate you know i yeah i'm a single woman and and that's that's all great with me um but it's a lot of time hey sorry okay it's okay a lot of the time um it's men who really shouldn't be making comments or even like touchy feely. Like I didn't, I didn't, there's not a sticker on me that says, Hey, come please touch me. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, so the fact that people feel the need or even the desire to put hands on me at a show in front of a bunch of people or make comments that most people wouldn't even make if they were attending a strip club. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's a little wild to me, you know? And, I don't, hold on, let me put this other dog. They want your attention. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always the, it's always the people that you see them with a wife earlier in the day and their wife's like sitting up in the crowd or whatever. And they feel that they can come down and be a little loosey goosey on their hands and words, yeah. you know, and, and I don't appreciate that. And I've been really thinking about, about that over the past year. Mm -hmm. um, not only because of what's going on behind the scenes or whatever, yeah, uh, but also because like I run a business now. Um, I have little little girls that are around me, um, little yeah. boys that are around me. You know, I cut a bunch of little kids' hair. Um, yeah, and and not only that, but their parents are you know watching what we all do too. Because social media, as much as you want to keep it separate. When you have someone like me that's got multiple pages doing multiple things, yeah. it's not always easy to keep things separated. And so I, even for just myself, before I heard about all this, have kind of taken a back road on some of what I post um, and what I don't, just for the sake of, well, how are the parents going to look at, yeah. at me and my business? How are these little girls going to... Are they gonna look at my stuff and be like, "Oh, well, if I am dressed skimpier, I'll be accepted and I'll be loved more"? Hell no, that's not that's not what I want yeah. to teach. No, no, and it's not exactly how it works anyway. I mean, there's right. a there's a certain maturity level, and and we're gonna get into this. So, exactly what we're kind of leading into is, you know, there's some people out there that are starting to pressure some of the promoters to be um, regulating what the models wear and what they're doing at the shows. Okay. Uh, and exactly like, how do you feel about that? Um, you know, I kind of got thrown into this group chat for a couple of days with a bunch of models and they mm. were, um, all kind of saying like, well, we should be able to do what we want. We're grown women, la la la. And, um, 
I don't know if they don't have the vision only be, if they don't have businesses or um, maybe this is just something they have done growing up mm. or things like that. I don't, I don't really know. I have to leave the group chat after a while just because it's too much. I'm trying, trying to run a business. My yeah. phone is going off a thousand times a day and, and me and group chats just don't really get along. Yeah. Um, but for me, when me and Juan Mendez, um, the owner of Unique Cutouts, had kind of had a conversation about this mm. before I went to Super Show this year, and mm. he told me what was going on. And so he said, hey, I would really just like you to be careful of what you wear. You can dress sexy, but don't be, you know, risque. Don't be yeah. skinny, you know, and those sorts of things. And for me, because I run a business, I think that I have a little bit of insight on that because it's not really – telling you what to do or what not to do. You can do whatever yeah. you want. You yeah. just can't do certain things in certain places, you know? Like I would never wear something at a show nowadays mm. that I wouldn't wear to work. Mm -hmm. Because if I, it, it's just like a respect thing. If I respect myself and the people that I'm working with enough to know a dress code or, a, or certain things that I should yeah. should not wear, then why would I change it up for my modeling? It just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Um, mm. Now, if there's, there's a right and a wrong way to put that also, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd be a little upset if somebody came up to me and be like, hey, you're too fat for that outfit, <laughs> you know? But the thing is, there are certain things, like I said, there are certain things you should and you should not wear, especially if it's at a family structured event yeah and i think or if it's an event for all ages i think right. there i mean there's this a term that i that i try to use because i respect any person that wants to, to do whatever they want but it's it's you know wearing body appropriate clothing right or oh excuse me clothing appropriate for your body mm -hmm. but that's also your view of your body right that's your right. vision for you and what you're trying to accomplish Right. And, and, and one way or the other, whether even if you're not modeling, you're still trying to accomplish how people see you when you're yeah. fully dressed. Some yeah. people don't care. You know, we talked about the, the guys wearing the, the shirt that, you know, stopped fitting them five years ago and they look like, <laughs> when you, do, you know, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. But people don't become self-aware because sometimes they just don't want it. They're in denial that they're no longer a medium and they're a three X. And I'm talking about men here. I'm, I'm not, just in general. People do not want to come to terms with who they are. And right. so that's, 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 that's a different, whole different thing. That's not what we're talking about is when you're trying to, what you're trying to convey by how you dress, wear, and act. Right. 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 You know what I have noticed though, because like I said, I've been doing this for a little, um, especially at the low rider shows, the first couple years you want to get, for lack of a better term, you want to get that attention. You want mm -hmm. people to know you, you want eyes on you, those yep. sorts of things. But what I did notice, and this is why I don't do this anymore is do I want that kind of attention? Exactly. Mm, no, not really. And actually I did a really good, um, it was almost like a, an experiment of sorts, like a social mm -hmm. experiment. So a few months ago, I went onto my Instagram and you know how in the insights you can look and see like which posts um, did better in different ways and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, what I noticed over the last year is that my posts that are a little risque, but everything is covered up. Mm. I will. Um, okay. So, so my stuff where you can see like butt cheeks or, or the stuff that's, the most, uh, what some would call like publicly inappropriate, those do really, really well with my likes, but my mm. followers drop. When I post the other ones, like my boudoir shoots that are risque, but classy, yeah. my followers go up, but my likes are lower. And for me, I would rather have a genuine, authentic follower number yeah. than have a bunch of likes. That's, but that's just me, you know, and, and that's something that I've learned. Like my page has grown from zero all by myself. I have mm. not paid for followers. I haven't mm. paid, you know, anybody to help out. Everything that I do is done by myself.
for a long time, I didn't even use hashtags because I just mm. didn't care for everybody to see it. I wanted people who wanted to see me to see these things, you know? Yeah. And so now that I'm trying to um, do something for my community to be a voice for, mm. because I'm from Yuma, Arizona, this is a smaller yeah. town, you know? And, and a lot mm. of people don't know that. A lot of people didn't even know for a while that I owned a business because I kept them very separated. Yeah. But nowadays it's just, it's more attractive to me to be absolutely sexy with all of my clothes on, you know? And, and I noticed that at this last show, I was way more respected. Mm. I did a lot better. I worked with a lot more photographers. And I missed you though. I was trying to find you again. And I, I couldn't, I got you some video. I got you in video, but that's about yes, it. I appreciate that. You know, but I, like I said, I was just so busy going from people to people and a lot mm. of it too. This year I spent a lot more time, um, getting to know the people that supported me. You know, if people came up mm. and they were like, Hey, I follow you on Instagram. I was, I made sure to be like, okay, let me get my phone out. What's your Instagram handle. I'm going to follow you back, you yeah. know, so that, if you give me support, I'm going to give it right back. If you notice mm. me, if you follow me, if you show love to me, I'm going to give that right back. Um, and yeah, so, absolutely. you know, as important as it is to get photos for a model, it's also very important to establish good foundations in your relationships inside of this scene. Uh, you know, I, and that kind of reminds me of something, and I'll lead into the next question, because there was a model there, and I didn't even have my camera on. I was just holding it. And I was going to ask because I just wanted to get a, a, a pan shot, like a clip right. of what they were doing. And the, and she just turned at me and she just looked and she's all, it costs this much to take a picture. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, okay, I just wanted to get a clip for my YouTube channel. Yeah. And then, well, you're going to tip and this and this and this and that. And I said, and I looked and then just the, the, the amount of rude. And I was like, wow, okay. And then actual the other models that were there, this was at a booth. The other models were there. They were like, oh, yeah. They, I mean, I got clips of them. She's like, well, take pictures of them. And, and I'm like, that is not going to get you far. And it's by the way you deal with people. Yes. It, it, I can understand if someone says, no, I don't even have a problem with that. Honestly, I didn't. But but she must have thought I was trying to, like, sneak record or whatever. Because I don't need to do that. You know me. I don't need yeah. to do that. Yeah. And so then I even was like. I was like, well, this is who I am, you know, in case, you know, you're not sh sure or whatever. And she's like, oh, I don't want your sticker or whatever and this and that. And I'm like, all right, there's no need to be rude. And I just walked away and I talked to the other people she was with and they were hella, they were hella cool. Yeah. But, and, and it's like, okay, maybe you're having a bad day, you know, I, nothing personal, but that is not how you conduct yourself. If you, if you really want to build a network or you're out there trying to accomplish something, cause I had never seen this person before. So you know, it's no loss to me, but right. so kind of leading back to what you were saying. So in this day and age with Instagram, with people having their own websites with, um, you know, what is it now? Well, Twitter, but now it's X, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then even people that the women that do have only fans, is it fair for people that are just outside of this whole community that we're part of to sit there and say that the women are still being exploited? In this industry, it's whether that be modeling or OnlyFans or what, what's that like that phone sex stuff that people still do, um, you know, anything like that. If you involve yourself in it, to me, that is, I sign the contract. I, I'm almost signing up for certain, uh, certain behavior from other people. You know, yeah. I have an OnlyFans and a lot of people don't even know because I don't, it's not something that I, I carry 24 seven. You know what I mean? Like for the people that would like to be involved in that, they come to my direct message or, mm. um, you know, something like that. And they ask, but yeah. I also am very strict about my boundaries. And when I'm out in public, you don't get to ask me about my OnlyFans. That is something private that I yeah. do. If you would like to discuss it, subscribe. Exactly. That's it. That that's that's a hard boundary that I have, and and that I actually 
um, ran into at this super show as well. And, and I wouldn't even, not that I was disrespectful. Like you were saying that girl was, mm. I was just like, Hey, that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> yeah. Like go yeah. ahead and message me. Um, you can even message me on Instagram if you want to know something about that. But if mm. it gets too deep, I'm going to send you that there's a place and a time for that. And it's not here. Yeah. Um, for, for people saying that women are being exploited, especially during shows, if you, there are a thousand choices you can make every day when you wake <laughs> up. Now, exactly. if you choose to wear fucking pasties and a G string to a show, that's a choice you made. You could have worn a dress. You could have mm. worn shorts and a tank top. You could have worn a fucking paper sack for all I care. You know, like, but there are certain things that are going to get you more negative attention. And yeah. there are certain things that will get you more positive attention. And I know that because I've done it. I'm not speaking from a holier than thou perspective. Mm. I'm not saying anything other than my own experience. I've watched. My first super show, I remember this vividly. There was this gorgeous woman and like, I love women, okay? Mm. So like half naked women is never gonna be a problem for me. Yeah. But um, she was in like a like a bikini, like a G-string and a, like a regular bikini top. And mm. she had this like mesh, long mesh robe over it. And uh -huh. she'd walk around in the long mesh robe. And then if a photographer asked her to take a photo with the robe off. I I saw it right in front of my eyes. They paid her a hundred dollars, and then she took it off. But she was very, even though she had a g-string on, she was very classy. It was like, you know, like she was covering yeah. her bits at all times. Even if she turned around to like show her butt cheek, she was only like showing the side, you know. And yeah. If there were, I noted how I love this woman. It like it's very vivid in my mind. If a kid came around, automatically boop boop, she would put it back on. Yeah. And like, okay, I want to be that. You know, I think that was at my second show, not my first show. Okay. Um, my first show that um, where I got that from was Georgia. She's very, very good at this. She, mm. even if she comes in a more risque outfit, she is always like paying attention, making sure yeah. you know if the kids are around or if um, you know like how her body looks, what she's showing and what she's not. Um, yeah. all of those sorts of things. And those are very important, especially kind of in the situation that we're in, because mm. you can wear something that is a little bit more skimpy and still not look like you're trying to exploit yourself. Really? I don't exactly. know how to say that. Uh. Well, I mean, it, 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 it what's a, so what, what I've heard from some of the other uh, women I've interviewed it's also a maturity level. Yeah. And so specifically for this uh, series of interviews, I have, I didn't ask any younger uh, inexperienced models. Right. You come on because I wanted to hear from the women that have been doing this. I want to hear from the, the insight and how you see, and you know, how you see things. And then so that some of the younger generation can actually look at this and go, okay, I need to realize I'm doing that and I'm doing that. It's, yeah. Is, 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 this, there's no right or wrong answer in this in this whole podcast and in, in, in general. It's just I, I, I one of the things that got me the reason why I prompted to do this was when they start really attacking promoters for having women at at the show, and that drama. It's like, dude, you're you're using these models as a weapon. Is it really? Is this really what you're wanting to do? Because now. Yeah. Now you're pointing fingers, but now you got to do the same. You got to make sure that the same thing is lining up with what you're saying. Other people are doing. <laughs> right. And it's kind of backfiring now because now you have to hold to a certain standard. Mm -hmm. Are you throwing stones and using the wrong people or, you know, whatever? I mean, it, at the end of the day, the models are just caught in the crossfire. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Well, and that's that right there is something that has been very important to me, too. From the beginning of my modeling career, I was approached by managers, agencies, um, uh, promoters, like tons of people that wanted me to join their team or wanted to help me with my modeling or whatever. Um, and what I've noticed 
from kind of my, my homegirls yeah. into stuff like that and what they experience. I'm like, you know what? I, I'm really glad that I haven't done that. And that's why I've stayed solo. It's just yeah. me. I show up to shows by myself. Um, well, okay, not by myself. I always bring a photographer and usually an assistant because mm. I lose my phone and my purse yeah. really easily. <laughs> but, well, um, you know, with that being said, I have to check myself. It's it's me who has to look in the mirror and be like, okay, if I had a daughter and mm. we're at a show, would I want her someday being me? Mm. You know, because these are the, for me, that's what it's about for me. I don't ever want um, to see a parent yeah. and, the, you know, the kid's trying to say hi or whatever, but and the kid, the parent turns them around because they're like, whoa, she's, that's too much. You know what I mean? And yeah, exactly. That goes back into creating foundational relationships. Like, mm -hmm. especially when you're dressed kind of skimpy, the owner, the vehicle owners, if it's a man, the wives, yeah. if you're dressed like that and you got a stank attitude, the wives are not going to be very happy with you taking photos or talking to the husbands or anything like that, you know? And yeah. so for me, especially the, the last three years, hey, especially the last three years, I have always, I say hi to the wives first every time. Yeah. Like, uh, unless, the, you know, they're not around each other or whatever, but that's a yeah. different story. But if I go up especially someone I don't know. If I go up and I say, hey, can I take a picture with your car? I'm looking at the wife every yeah. time. Every exactly. Time. Um, yeah, exactly. And I think I've, I've heard that from other experienced models. It's like one of the things that said like at a, at a show, if they really trying to get anybody's attention or anything and they see a, a couple, they always address the wife first. Yep. yep. So. And that is a maturity thing too, because yeah. I mean, at first, how are, how are you supposed to know until you find out? Exactly. You know, so you got to screw up a couple times somewhere to figure out what's what, what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. Um, now, from what I've noticed, like there's this dude, Henry, and I cannot remember. I think his, his wife's name is Amber. I'm not positive. Um, but they do Susio's Customs. So what I've noticed with them is that she was kind of, the wife was kind of weary with me at first. Mm. But the past two years, because I've number one addressed her first but then i've stayed connected to her through yeah. instagram and through all that every time i see her she's like what's up dude you know and and yeah I take pictures with her car and um dan paz is the same way he him and his lady are like the coolest people because yeah. i have taken the time to love on these women especially with new class <laughs> but like at their show every or every single time i see them even earlier today i was at the gym and I spotted one of the new class cars and I kind of took huh. a video of it from inside and I sent it to the wife and I was like, I spotted your husband. And she like, nice. she reposted it and she was like, see, I got eyes everywhere. But it's you not, go. you know, it's not like it's that. All it's, fun. Not it's all in fun. It's all in fun. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. And, that, and that's what it comes down to. I think, you know, one of the biggest things, I, the, a lot of photographers trying to figure out how to work with models. How, they, they ask me all the time, how do you do it? How do you do it? I say, you got to build a rapport. Yeah. If you don't, if they don't know you, then they're going to be worried. And if other photographers don't know you, they're going to, you know, they're going to be like, eh, they're going to question. Right. So you have to be out there. Just, you have to go do your thing. And then people have to see you, see you do it. And be yeah. yourself. Like that's, that's one thing I kind of, the first year I went to the show, I wasn't sure how to be or what to do so i was i just acted like myself you know yeah and so the next couple of years the next two or three years after that it was almost like with my modeling i kind of molded myself into becoming whatever i thought a lowrider model should be mm -hmm. and what i thought would make me more popular in the lowrider scene and my followers and my yeah. engagement plummeted. Like yeah. I'm talking, I lost about 2000 followers and just because I wasn't being myself. Yeah. And so like I said, these, these, this last year specifically, but really the last two years, I've tried my best to just be
be exactly who I am. And if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. And what exactly. I've noticed is that I do way better and I have way more fun at the shows just being who I am and being true to myself, whether or not I think people will like it. Absolutely. And and that's a big thing. And so one of the other questions I want to follow up with is when it comes down to models and the certain events and shows and everything like that, the responsibility and I think you've already pretty much said, you know, it's like a lot of it has to do with the way you want to pr project yourself out there. But sometimes I find that uh, there's a fine line between the promoters and the photographers. And I think that where the responsibility lies on some of the photographers, because we all know that majority of the models that come in to these events are invited or brought in by the photographer. So what do you think the responsibility lies on? Is it the photographer's responsibility? Is it the promoters? Is it both? Is it the model? I mean, I think it kind of lands in everybody's court. Um, number one, like I said, I could have easily chosen to wear, um, what do you call those things? Like, like booty shorts or whatever. Yeah. Um, and a bikini top. I could have easily done that because I've done it before. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed, like I said, I've noticed that I don't like the kind of attention that that brings me. And on top of that, some photographers don't even want to work with me if I dress like that. And mm -hmm. I have less uh, vehicle owners that will allow me to shoot with their vehicles. Okay. But I will also say that it, uh, it also lands on the promoter in, in a way... Um, I mean, there could be certain guidelines, you know, and that's what contracts are for. Yeah. <laughs> but but everybody's guy. freelance. You know, at the end of the day, they don't contract because they're not paying photographers. They're not. I mean, the world's changed since magazines are not a thing no more. So one yeah. of the things that people don't understand is that a lot of the promoters, unless it's their photographers, a very specific photographer, everybody's there. And that's why you have the controversy over how much they charge for media passes and everything else. But right. I think if they're going to charge 200 something dollars for a media pass, then some of these photographers are going to go, okay, well, I'm going to shoot models any way I want. Right. But at the same time, I think that on the website of the, you know, they say it, this is, I'm just using an example, but like Lowrider Magazine or Original Lowriders or even Impala's Magazine, right. they can have a, a standard, uh, like a photographer, you know, um, yes. like, a, like a, a section saying, this is what we outline, we just expect of models. Yes. If they don't have one, then you can easily say then they're not really tripping. But if they if they want to have a standard, they should say, hey, if you plan on modeling at our events, please go look at our show and this is what we ask you Correct. not to do. I think that's Correct. fair. Yeah, I think that's fair too. Uh, you know, but but also, like I said, there there's Georgia who I've noticed it from. Um, Candy and Chrome is pretty good at it too, uh, mm. about wearing something – that kind of serves both purposes. And actually, <laughs> this um, this last super show, I totally forgot the two the two outfits that I bought and brought specifically yeah. for the super show. I left them in Mesa. <laughs> oh wow! The morning of the show, you know. And so, number one, I was not about to do that two hour drive back to the other side of town for outfits. Yeah. But one of the outfits that I did buy, um, and and I'm gonna have to do a shoot in it at some point but it's this me black mesh dress uh -huh. uh, and mesh right so you can obviously see through it yeah. but i had what i had to go under it was just like a regular pair of shorts and like a it's not a regular bra but it's not a sports bra either it's kind of like a cami a camisole or whatever and i actually called juan mendez and i was like hey can you check this out and see if you think it's too much to have at a show and he was mm -hmm. like honestly i think that that is it's a really, you know, um, classy way of showing your skin a little bit more, but yeah. still being covered. Exactly. And that, for me, when I see a woman, like a gorgeous woman, that is dressed classy, I, 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 I'm, I'm a puddle. I'm a puddle. I just melt. I think it's so beautiful and attractive, and and it leaves something to for the mind, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think I I mean like in my 
my personal my personal like seeing a woman in a pencil skirt a long pencil skirt just is amazing <laughs> amazing <laughs> but heels gotta be heels though yep. nobody wears nobody wants to wear crocs and no. tennis shoes no i, yeah. I mean I, everybody wears tennis shoes nowadays because it's a, a lot of walking yeah, uh, I'm still I'm still that guy. Okay, you can walk around in your tennis shoes. Can well, can we put the heels on for the pictures, please? Yes, agreed. <laughs> um, um, so coming back to all the things that you've learned throughout the years, if you can go back to when you first started and tell yourself, you know, something that you know now, what would that be? Number one is set boundaries with people. And that doesn't, that doesn't have to be like a, like it can be in the moment, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I've been spoken to pretty out of pocket before. Mm -hmm. And so nowadays my response to that, if anybody says something I don't like, I just look at them and, I, and I'm like, I don't deserve that. Number one, yeah. please don't speak to me that way. If they continue it, I just walk away. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's one big thing. Um, but also, like I like I said earlier, I kind of lost myself in becoming who I thought the culture or the scene or the people wanted me to be. Mm. And so that's my biggest thing. Stay true to yourself and know what it is you want from this, right? Yeah. Um, at, at first, I think that I was kind of attracted by to modeling, right, by the money and mm. And I'm just going to be straight up, like, for me, the lowrider scene has not been my moneymaker. My yeah. boudoir shoots, my brand shoots, um, doing stuff with the community here, that has been my big, quote-unquote, moneymaker. But what I've also learned is if money is what you're chasing, it's never going to work out in the best way for you. And, and that, that's in, you know, what I do in uh, the yeah. salon barbershop. That's mm. in modeling, that's in bike life, that it, 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 with my dogs, like with no. anything, if money is what you're chasing, number one, it's not going to come to you. The more I yeah. stress and the more I chase money, the less money comes to me. Exactly. Uh, but also, this is a big one, never showing up to photo shoots or events alone. That's a big one. Yeah. And number two, as a model, not signing a contract with like like every person i interact with but if i'm gonna do a shoot like a legitimate shoot with a mm. photographer they can have a contract if they want but i'm also bringing a contract mm -hmm. because i have sh shot with many photographers who promise this that and the other and either under deliver or don't deliver at all yeah or they want to take, or you, or they want to take you out to dinner before they uh, give you. Uh, a yeah, <laughs> yeah, or after, or you know, try to, you know, the flirtation at a show when I've asked a photographer or when a photographer comes to me, and they're like, "Hey, can I work with you? I would love to do some photos with you," and then they're flirting the whole time. I'm like, "Can we not do this? You know, I'm not here. This isn't a dating." Yeah, it's, this isn't. I ugh, I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, there's a well, there's a term that I've used before, and it, and I tell and I've told models. I said you got to flirt with the camera. Yeah, there's a, difference. There's a yes. difference. You got to look the part. Yes. And the the thing is, is once again, this comes back to the respons the responsibility of the photographer to be mature enough and let things be. This is something where we have an end goal. Um, what I like to explain, and this is also something some sometimes, like you said, you like doing it when you did do like maybe you're more revealing things. It was in the move in time. There's less people. Yeah. That's what I try to explain to some models is that we're not going to go get the perfect picture in the middle of the show. And then they're flustered. Yeah. You know, there's too many people. There's people yeah. in the background. Yeah. I want, you know, pictures for a poster. And I, I understand that. But I think the the whole modeling of the show is more of marketing. It's more yes. of being seen by the public. People going, who yes. are you? How do I follow you? Are you on yes. Instagram? What is your website? The catch for me, why, I, you know, one of the things 
is you know, and, I, and it's I'm, to me, it's a secret. It's not really a secret, but it's one of my 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 formulas. There's photographers out there that want to shoot before the the day before and before the show opens because they don't want no one in the background. Yes. These same photographers will complain that nobody follows them and nobody knows who they are. To a point, right? Some some people yeah. do know, yeah. but and my point is is this is exactly why when I do shooting, when I do shoots, it's in the middle of the whole chaos of the show because I want people to look and say, "Well, who's that?" Yes. And and I said this again. They don't really care about me. They care about the model. And if yes. I'm taking pictures of the model, well, what's the easiest way to find the model? Well, when I post the picture. So they're going to look at my back of my shirt and it's going to say Peaches Lowriders and they're going to yep. look it up on Instagram. And that, what does it bring? It brings more attention to me, more attention to my YouTube channel. And then, yep. then it goes to them. Then they find you and um, yep. and then they go follow you and, and so on. And this is why, like, I don't get all, there's a lot of photographers that get all butthurt when a model starts shooting with multiple different photographers and they're like well i thought i was your photographer well that's how you get found because they're gonna people that really start looking into the models they're gonna look at oh they shot with this person let me see what that person shoot like other girls because a lot of the guys are just looking for different women to follow yeah but it brings it still brings people to our pages yeah so it is a network that so the past um I think he's been with me four years now. Digital Chris, um, that that dude is my fucking roll dog. He, anytime I have an idea, anytime I go to a show, like that man is gonna be right next to me because mm -hmm. number one, we used to be roommates when he lived down here in Yuma. Now he's got family and he's living up in Phoenix and he's buying house and, and all these sorts of things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but the first time I met him, when I found out he was a photographer, I was like, look here, dude, I've got an idea for you. And, and I basically laid it out. Like if you support me in this, I'll support you. I'll introduce you to the people I know. I'll help you get mm. more shoots with more girls who you want to shoot with. Yeah. Um, and like I said, this is our fourth year. He is an amazing person. His photos are off the hook. I, I love working with him. Um, he'll give ideas, I'll throw ideas. And not only mm. that, but like, when we, like this past year, I was around Shauna and Vanya a lot. And so mm. if I saw Shauna, um, you know, doing something that I would like to see photos of, I was like, yo, Chris, go, go shoot her real quick, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, and number one, because I know that Chris is a stand up man, I can mm. introduce him to any woman and he's never going to make himself look like an ass or make me look like an ass for sending him that way. Yeah. Uh, now, also, I have been around photographers like the photographer that brought me in. I that brought me into the lowrider scene. Okay. I don't work with him anymore because of the lack of respect he seems to have for models mm. and the lack of attention on what might be showing and what might not be shown. Yeah. In a photo, you know. Mm. Um, I just shared a, a, a picture on my story earlier today where this mm. girl was in a jacket. She may or may not have had a bra on, I can't remember, and, and like a G-string underwear. And uh. at no, looking at the photo there, you can't see any bit of unnecessary skin, if that makes yeah. sense. You know? yeah. So those, and, and personally for me as a model, I have no clue what my body looks like on the other side of the camera. So that yeah. I feel like is the photographer's job to be like, hey, can you drop your hand a little lower? Can you move your leg a little bit mm. so that there's not crotch shots or, yeah. you know, like, well, for me, like, I don't, I don't wear anything where my boobs are going to fall out. But if there's something like a nipple showing or there's yeah. possibly going to be an overspill of Janet Jackson moment, you know, like yeah. I trust that the photographer stop it can tell me like to fix hey, yeah not just take advantage of it and then just keep yes, taking pictures exactly. I, exactly. yeah I, I did a, a shoot many years ago when when the model she was fully naked but i never saw her naked yes and that is like oh it's just so beautiful to me you know and and, and not only that not only is the woman like that beautiful to me because you can be showing 
all your skin and not mm. be posing nude, you know? Exactly. But it is so respectful of a man to to be able to direct that and really yeah. show off a woman's body without being sexual about it, you know? And that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the, the big yeah, turnoff yeah. for a lot of models yes. is that one of the first things that some of the photographers ask is, do you do nudes? Do you do implied nudes? Uh, yes. <laughs> I was at, I, oh man. And okay. So my worst experience as a model was a implied nude boudoir oh. shoot mm -hmm. that was supposed to be had. Right. And I had talked to this photographer, um, for like four or five months over social media, two mm. of my female friends who model also did shoots with them and, and they said that they trusted him, blah, blah, blah. Well, I had a, a male friend that was supposed to show up to that shoot just to keep me safe. Yeah. And it, it ended up that he was, he had, to, uh, he got called into work, had to go into a shift. So, mm. I mean, it was in Phoenix. I don't, at that point, I didn't know very many people out there that I could just call yeah. Hey, can you come and hang out with me for an hour or two while I do this photo shoot? Mm. So I did the shoot and there was a couple things that happened that should not have happened. Mm. Um, and that would not have happened if there was somebody, somebody else. else there, whether that be a female or a male. Mm. And that's why I went on another podcast uh, with my friend Mo. And that was like, he, he asked me that question, like, what is the number one thing that you would tell, you know, other models that are just starting this? And yeah. that's always going to be my first thing. Don't ever, I don't care how long you've known the photographer. I don't care how many of your friends have worked with them. You never go to a photo shoot alone ever. No, Period. absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, but that's a maturity thing too. And that's a learning yeah. experience type of deal. You know, I just, bringing that up i hope that younger models please listen to me learn from my mistakes and the things that are negative that happen to me so that you don't have to go through them exactly so well you know the 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 one thing like i said my point my worry is that people are are, are starting to going to start looking at modeling in a different way and i don't think it's fair i don't think it's fair because it's not just because i want to use models right. but in general i see that it you know it's, it's just a tactic to go after your competitor and um in my opinion what the stuff that's going on right now is pretty much they're just using this as another way of uh trying to you know devalue uh, different promoters car shows or something like that and it, it's just a funny thing that it comes down is that now they got it they got to monitor it for themselves too. Well, okay. So this is something I wanted to bring up too. Um, I think it was a year or two ago. I saw this model and she had posted on her Instagram um, this, I don't know if it was a comment or if it was a caption, but it mm. said, um, I don't want to hear you calling yourself a lowrider model. If you've never modeled for lowrider magazine. Which Can't I, model for lower I can magazine no more. That to a certain point, but if you actually knew um, the behind the scenes on Lowrider magazine, they took models out quite a few years ago. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't know the specifics on that just because I haven't really, well, they don't use models. So why would, why would I go and try to find out why they don't, you know? Um, yeah. When, when motor trend took over pretty much, they took yeah. the models out. And, and who knows, it, they may well have dealt with this sort of situation and that's why they were just like, nope, no more models, you know? And, but to say to someone who has been going to lowrider uh, low rider shows consistently, establishing relationships, um, putting out amazing content, you know, mm. things like that. And the only thing they don't have on their resume is I haven't worked with lowrider magazine. Okay. Well, Maybe some people who are still professional, who still mm. have a stake in the lowrider community, maybe they just weren't around at that time. But exactly. how? That's not fair to take. A, don't call yourself a lowrider model. Well, if we weren't around at that time. Some of these younger girls yeah. they would have had zero opportunity to get yeah. into that because they came into it long after lowrider took them out. You know. Exactly. But.
what I will say also is there's got to be a level of professionalism. These are professional shows we're going to, right? Yeah. These are shows that people pay a lot of money to enter your vehicle, to get a media pass, stuff like mm-hmm. that. If you want to go and be skimpy wimpy at a show that you don't have to pay for, good on you. That's, that's totally cool. But yeah. there, when you go specifically, when you get a media pass, there is a level of professionalism that you should check yourself on. And if you're the photographer or the promoter and you're bringing these people out and you're giving them a media pass, you've got to realize it's like if my coworker went out on a Friday night wearing a Divine Instincts hair studio shirt and made an ass of herself at the club. Because she's wearing that, that's going to reflect on me. Exactly. And... You know, that's another thing with Arizona Super Show asking me, hey, can you come out? You've come out the past couple years. Can you come out? You know what I mean? And and I am grateful for Rich specifically asking me and, and making sure to keep up with me throughout the year and offering those things to me because yeah. he doesn't have to. Yeah. It's because of the relationships I've built and the consistent love and support I show to not only these big shows, but to the uh, the other models that come in, the yeah. photographers I work with, the promoters that are there, the artists that are there, um, all of these things that that all matters. Like this lowrider culture and the lowrider community, for me, the reason I even wanted to come in mm-hmm. was because I saw a love and a family ideal that I didn't get growing up you know my family my cousins my aunties my uncles my grandparents were hundreds of miles away from me the entire time growing up so Mm. growing up in yuma arizona i'm on the border of california and the border of mexico like i can get to either one of those places in 10 minutes from where i sit right now yeah you know and and so obviously because the lowrider scene is heavily steeped in latino culture i saw that like Oh, that's my cousin. Oh, that's my cousin. Oh, that's my auntie. You know, and, and all of these people like just accepted me and loved me. One of my friends, Cynthia, she goes, you're an honorary Mexican just because you, <laughs> you were born and raised here and you show yeah. so much love to the culture and the community. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's it's just and- it's simple. Show love, mm-hmm. be professional and be yourself. It's that it's that easy now. Do I think that people should be hated on for how they look? No, they can look however they want to, but if they don't have a level of professionalism, then they might not be invited to my show. Like I I run an annual show down here every year. I also, a couple years ago, I threw together a calendar shoot for one of the car shows out here. And two of the models showed up in what I would say it wasn't working for me. It didn't, it was <laughs> yeah. not outfits that I was going to have in the calendar that I put together. Mm-hmm. And I told them that respectfully. I was like, there was a, you know, there's a list of things that I said that I sent you guys, you signed the contract. Yeah. These are things that I do want. And these are things that I don't want. Mm-hmm. You can still be in the calendar, but you cannot wear that. Yeah. Then and, and contracts, like I said, contracts and, um, I mean, just guidelines. There's ways of, to avoid miscommunication or problems Absolutely. like what we're seeing now. No, exactly. And, and that's one thing I was just talking about, like, while well, saying, like, don't do contracts, but I'm talking about like, long term contracts. I like right. what you have to say is, like, you're doing a contract for this very specific event so that you can get what you want to see out of it. Right. That makes the most sense because you're sitting there and you're laying out the criteria for that. Yep. And, a lot of people don't think, you know, that ahead. Everything is yeah. just, but but that also gives you that. Hey, you know what I said? I needed this, but you're this is way too much, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change this, and so on and so forth. But then you have the the written thing saying this is exactly what I, I already asked of you. Yep, and so it's black and white right there. There's no mm-hmm. there's no questioning it. If you lay down everything you do want and everything you do not want. There's, mm-hmm. it leaves no room for a gray area. Exactly. At all. You know, and, and this is the thing. If 
like let's say I was going to do another calendar shoot. There are mm. certain things that I would put on there now that I didn't know back then because yeah. I didn't have the experience. Mm. Now, what I will tell you um, is that, you know, for me, if there was like, let's just say, I don't know, I just I wouldn't do that. So it'd be hard. But if I if I did throw a calendar shoot or a car show and I invited model, models out again and there was someone that, number one, didn't show up as professionally as I wanted them to. Yeah, I can say, hey, can you change this, this and that? And if they say no, well, then you're breaching the contract and you're not. I don't want you here. That's, yeah, that's an easy way to fix that. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, there's no right or wrong. Hmm? It's a weird world we live in these days. Well, yeah, I, I think at the, at the end of the day, I think we're people are just picking their battles and they're using them for other means. They're not really going for the the big picture, or it, it's not it's not about the models. It's not about uh, exploiting the models. It's just throwing something out there and then not realizing that it affects everybody. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and it, it, there's there's a certain backlash. People are not thinking. And they're just trying to, you know, um, say random things. And now it's a big subject. Now everybody's talking about it. Or now people have, you know, something to say, on, you know, like you said, in group chats and so on and so forth. But right. ultimately, you know what it is? It's it's all of us uh, in the community that are going to dictate how that how that ends up being. Yeah. Because we're either not going to support those events or those promoters or we're right. going to change the way we do things. Yeah. As a bystander, um, looking in it, to me, when I first heard about this, it sounded like someone's ego got bruised. Exactly. And the thing is you, your ego can't get bruised. Mm. If, number one, you're not doing everything out of ego, but number two, yeah. if you're not doing anything wrong, why is it offending you? Exactly. It's very strange. You know? Well, I think I think somebody got offended because they used that as a as ammo towards uh, somebody that they wanted to, you know, get out of the scene or whatever, maybe. Right. And that's so. and that itself is steeped in ego. That's that's another thing. Just like chasing money, doing things out of ego. Well, I wonder how people are going to look at me that that doesn't like I yeah. said, with becoming someone else that doesn't get you anywhere. Positive, no. at least, you know, and. I don't know. I come with love and respect always. And the times where I haven't done that, it's because I'm having a bad day or yeah. I'm allowing something else to affect something or somebody that has nothing to do with it, you know? And, and a lot of people don't realize that when you throw that quarter into the wishing well, all of those waves go out and it touches everything, you know? Exactly. And for me, someone I've put my heart and soul into my modeling. Like I said, I've built my page authentically by myself. And I know that there's other models out there because I've discussed this mm -hmm. with those people. But how is somebody, and I don't even know who the original person that started all of this stuff. I don't, I don't know who it is. And I haven't gone searching for it because I don't. It, it doesn't, it, yeah, it doesn't bring value. I haven't done anything wrong mm -hmm. and I haven't, um, I just have no desire to chase after negativity. Exactly. And so for me, I just speak. That's, that's why I kind of made a, a pre video before super show. There's posts on my store or on my, on my Instagram about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so that people know how I show up to shows, how I behave, yeah. what I accept around me and what I don't, um, have I written a contract as of now? Yes, I did. After this super show, I did, uh, you know, write up a small contract. Just saying, yeah. like, if I do sh do a shoot with you, I expect to get photos back. They don't have to be yeah. the next day. But I refuse to shoot with anybody, number one, who's going to make me look bad in the photos. Mm. Um, and somebody that... I spend a half an hour to an hour with taking photos and then I never even see one. Exactly. Like, that's frustrating. That's my, the time of my life that I cannot get back. That's the one thing 
I have in my life, I cannot give back. And for me to give you my time and for you to just shit on me like that by just negating the anything, yeah. that's, that's it's disrespectful. But Well, that that's the whole thing. It's like, that's one of the things I've always said too. And then people wonder why, like, oh, they don't get invited to a show or something like that. I have built, I have a website, I have a YouTube channel. And people yep. know where my, my photos are. Yep. There's photographers I see shooting, and then I never see any of their work. Exactly. So, oh, by the way, those pictures you took of Nessa? Oh! Oh! Those are good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, it was nice. It was nice. Just, you know, I, I, was, I was solo, and I was... Uh, all by myself and i had to do everything and you know it's it's hard to get in i'd like I, okay like 20 like there were 20 minutes and 20 minutes of shooting and yeah. then and it's like then i turn around to go find someone and i can't find them you know so yep. <laughs> well that's the problem you and i kept running into but but yeah. that's okay that's number one that's because you and i have built rapports with mm -hmm. people um with the show with owners that People want us around. People yeah. enjoy our content or enjoy our energy, those sorts of things. They know that for me, Beach is Lowriders, that's someone that can be trusted. Miss mm. Magic Hope, she's someone that can be trusted, you know? And that means the freaking world to me. You know, Click yeah. and High Class, they always go out of their way to make every show as comfy and as easy yeah. as possible for me. And that would not have happened had I not created the relationships with not only the club, but the singular people inside of the club. Absolutely. Um, if I didn't, you know, show love to not only their pages, but them as a person, you know, mm. how's the family doing? How's this? You know, we talked about this at the last show. How is this situation going for you? How's your mom's health? You know, that's, there was three people in the in the bigger clubs that I remembered vividly the, the year before had said something about their family was going through hard times. And so I made sure to ask those people, hey, how's your family doing? You know, and they were just like, absolutely. Well, you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Because that it matters like this. My heart is in this. Yeah. How and that's there, I not. Yeah. And that's one thing I, I just did a interview for a documentary and uh, from a San Jose State uh, student. But that was one of the big things that I said was one of the reasons why I like the community is, you know, people, they actually reach out when they know you're going through something or whatever, you know, I mean, they see, you know, when, when I first started in this, my mom was uh, going through cancer treatment. She had just, you know, finished getting surgery and all this other stuff. And people would see me and just go, you know, my daughter, my mom, my me, you know, yeah. they reach out and make sure like, no, you're not the only one. And then when my mom passed, it was the same thing. People come to me. I lost my mom too. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The, the, the low rider community is like, unlike any other community where outsiders think we're gangbangers and drug dealers and it's not, we're just people. And they actually give a shit about each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Family. Yeah. Telling yeah. you like that's man, the, the just not the un not unconditional love because you know unconditional love is great loving somebody for exactly who they are but mm. i but i feel like loving somebody right and this is this is how i would come at a model in the situation we're in like mm. do you really want somebody coming at you in a in a negative aspect can you yeah. do you want to be treated like some girl off the street no so i'm because I love you, I'm going to mm. come to you and say, I would think twice about wearing that. I would think twice about saying that. I would think twice about working with that photographer or going to this show or anything yeah. like that. That comes from my heart and soul because, like I said earlier, I've already experienced so much <laughs> negative. So if anybody can learn from my negative experiences to make theirs positive, please, please do. Yeah, absolutely. And with that being said, I want to thank you for your time. I want to yeah, thank you course, for coming yeah. on here. Um, you know, we're going to wrap this up. We're over an hour and, and, and great content. Um, and it's always good talking to you. Yeah, I appreciate you asking me to do this. And, and just know, man, that all of this, 
you need anything, it comes from my heart and soul. You let me know. Like, definitely. I got big love for you guys, and and I I appreciate I appreciate you very very much. And I appreciate everything you do. Keep doing yeah. it. And yeah. uh, once again, thank you, and I appreciate it. Of course. Let me know if you need anything. All right. Pinches Lowriders.